Oh, it's fun. You know, spend a lot of time with those guys, some of them uh, all the way back to 1986. So with the staff and then, of course, a bunch of the players as well. So uh, it's fun. You know, I'm glad they're here. Big, big benefit to us and our program for them to come to town and play us. And once the game starts, we'll just line up and play like any other game. How many of those guys, Coach, on the, on how many of the players uh, were you associated with uh, recruiting or? Uh... Well, several of those upperclassmen, you know, those, those seniors and 50-year seniors um, you know, we were involved with. Those kids have been there and done a great job, had great careers. So, uh, and then some of the young guys was there when we were recruiting them and before they, before they got on board, but knew them quite well before that. Do you and Coach Kruger get much time to catch up, or is it just in passing something like this? Uh, we talk all the time. You know, we talk all the time. My son, my son's going to OU. My younger son, he's a manager for their team. Um, you know, we're always going to stay in touch. His operations guy has been one of my best friends since we were together at K State in 1986. So I talk to him probably three days a week, just about different things. So stay very, very close to those guys. Is it mostly on the court stuff, or just life stuff that you guys talk about? More, more life stuff, you know, if there's something specific, I won't hesitate to call Coach Kruger and talk to him about it. Um, uh, we, talked, we talked quite a bit last year, you know, they, they had such a good start to the season and, and then uh, had a little trouble hanging on in, in conference play, but uh, a little of both. Did you know once you got your own head coaching job that you'd like to face Kruger's team or was that something you wanted to shy away from at any point? Yeah, never really thought about it at the time, you know, and then, then when uh, – you know, when this just, just happened to work out, you know, it's a fairly easy trip for them. And then to tie it in with, with the Rio Grande Valley trip was kind of unique. Very, very special deal. You know, I saw that this first time in 80 years, I think, that Oklahoma's opened the season with two road games uh, or two road games outside of Oklahoma. Um, so it was pretty interesting stuff. Kind of cool for him to go go down there and play Coach Hill, you know, who was with him for 12 years and assist, as an assistant, and then to come up here and for it to work out this way where he could kind of do it in one road trip was pretty cool. Is there anything you draw on your time together in the matchup that helps you or gives you any kind of tactical edge? Well, there's a lot of familiarity. You know, we were together a long time, and, and certainly we uh, we're gonna do a lot of things similarly, uh, both mostly man to man. You know, got similar baseline out of bounds plays, those types of things. We both switch a lot defensively, so there's familiarity there. But you know, once the game starts, it's all about reacting and making plays and. So that kind of goes out the window at that point. What was it, what was it like to uh, play for him, Coach, to get recruited by him and play for him? Well, for me, it was it was huge. You know, he was uh, he was a Kansas guy that played two sports at K-State. I was a Kansas guy that wanted to play two sports at K-State and did. Um, he was a point guard. So he just, just helped me make the transition from being a you know a good high school player to learning the college game. I wasn't even a – point guard in high school I was just, just played you know and was an average shooter so, so he helped me in so many ways and, and helped me learn to play the point helped me learn to become a leader and uh, meant, meant a great deal to me on and off the court you know and he along with my father you know, are, uh, who I base most of our most of our philosophy off of on the court what's you the, uh, you guys nearly uh, made 30 years ago you all nearly made the final four right we did yeah my sophomore year we had a Really, really good senior class, and uh, had a good team. And uh, we beat Purdue, who's the number one seed in our in our region. Beat them, and and then uh, played Kansas in the Elite Eight game to go to the Final Four. And Final Four was in Kansas City that year, so came up one game short. What's the biggest thing you learned from him about being a head coach? Uh, it'd be hard to pinpoint one thing, but just just watching him every day, how he how he treated people, how he interacted with people, how he never got too high, too low. You know, just always every day get, trying to get better. You know, you guys are going to talk to me after games this year, and that's what we're going to say every t every single time. And that's what he did every day for 30 years. I was around, and he came in. This was the same guy every day, after a win, after a loss. Came in, watched the film. How are we going to get better today? And uh, just had a had a free coaching clinic every single day on the court, and had a had a free life life skills lesson uh, off the court every day. What, what about having someone of that caliber come here to the convo? What's the anointing like of that game for this program right now this year? Well, I think it's generating a lot of buzz. You know, we handed out 600, 600 student tickets in basically an hour, maybe a little less than an hour on Wednesday on campus. Uh, you know, Oklahoma brand is a big brand, even in the state of Texas. Obviously, they come down here and recruit a lot for football and basketball. So uh, that, that OU brand is a big deal. And for them to come to the convo is, is great for our program. We'll have a great atmosphere in here. And we're very, very appreciative of it.
Is there anything that you maybe weren't prepared for taking a head job or that you didn't see, you know, inside of the job that working with Coach that you didn't uh, anticipate? Oh, there was, there was a few surprises. You know, there were some things I, I knew I had didn't have much experience with scheduling. Scheduling is such an important part of this game. And, and uh, my buddy Shep has been his ops guy forever and has handled the scheduling there for all those years and does a great job with it. Uh, so I didn't have much experience with that. It's, it's been interesting and a uh, learning experience as we go along here. Uh, APR, things like that, you know, are huge. The impact of those, we've never had any APR issues anywhere I've been before, so it wasn't even something we talked about much. And then we got the job here, you know, we had a pretty low APR score, and we've had to uh, make roster moves with that in mind early on. What about the challenge of playing them, Coach? I mean, some big, uh, some big, big dudes that walk, just walked out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they've got a, they've got a pretty good-looking crew. You know, they got great size. You know, and the thing, they're a very, very experienced team. You, know, you got Jamani McNeese as a fifth-year senior. Odoms and James are fourth-year seniors that have been there and, and been, you know, uh, significant players. You know, rotation guys, starters. And then you got two grad transfer guards that came in. So you got three fifth-year guys and two seniors. So uh, they're big, they're strong. They shot it very, very well against uh, RGV the other night. So um, they'll be a. They'll be a Tough opponent. We knew that when we scheduled them, but that'd be all right. We're gonna we're not gonna tiptoe in here. We're gonna come in and fly up and down the court the best we can and try to make shots and go right at them. Coach Peck was joking with me uh, when I came in. Coach, he said uh, he, uh, he he was gonna ask you if you could spend all day in church just praying. <laughs> they're they're an imposing looking crew right now. They are. <laughs> They've done a great job. You know, a couple of skinny guys that came in there. Um, Bryce Dobb on their strength and conditioning staff done a great job bulking them up. So. Uh, yeah, we're not going to out-muscle them. We're not going to overpower them, but, but we're going to try to spread them out and move them and, and attack them. And you know, A lot of times when you, you're, you're playing an uh, a elite program like that, you're worried about slowing – you're trying to slow things down, right. uh, thinking fewer possessions is better, fewer possessions are going to increase your chances for winning. And We're not going to look at it that way. I, I don't know that that's to our advantage. You know, I think more possessions is better than, better than fewer possessions in this regard. Has your practice been any different coming off a loss in the opener? How have the guys responded to that? Nothing drastic. You know, we didn't panic after that game. We just didn't play well enough. So uh, I thought our guys were really, really sharp yesterday. They locked in, you know, working on things we need to work on. I thought we had a terrific practice. And, you know, looking forward to having another good one today. Uh, our guys will be fired up to play. There's no question about it. Um, you know, they, they enjoyed the game last year. We, you know, we, we, I don't know if it was real, real close, but it kind of, People thought it was. You know, we, we were in the game. We scored enough points. Um, they're a drastically different team than they were a year ago. And, um, but our guys will be fired up. All right, cool. Thank, Thank you, much. guys.